Hi there, folks. Will here from Craft Music. We're going to spend a little bit of time today with the Novation Peak, and we're going to focus on some of the hands-on sound design capabilities of the synthesizer. There's been a lot of very thorough discussion of the technical specifications of the instrument. Um, it's oversampled alias-free digital oscillators, the wonderful analog filter, uh, but what really struck me about the instrument was how well laid out the control are and how quick and intuitive it can be to start from one patch and turn it into an entirely different sound. So in order to showcase this facet of the instrument, I've sort of canned a couple of arrangements in Ableton here. So we've got a couple MIDI clips and uh, we can start by listening to sort of a scratch recording I did of different sounds from the peak uh, playing back the parts in the arrangement. And then we'll go through one by one and kind of lay in the track and uh, you can see how we can go from one sound to another quickly and uh, enjoyably with the instrument. So let's have a listen to what we've got to start and then we will go from there. So let's start with kind of the initial hook that this was based off of. And uh, I've got a patch here pulled up, uh, the film board lead, a nice little two oscillator sort of sine wave and noise uh, sort of thing that is a really good starting point for a sound like this. So let me go ahead and get that clip playing here and we should hear only that. All right, so let's take a little bit of edge off of this. Turn the filter cutoff down. And then let's add a little bit of kind of pluck to this. So we're going to turn the sustain down on the amp envelope. And you can hear there's a nice smooth takeover whenever you change the values from where the preset had laid. Let's add a little bit of filter pluck because I like the overtone from this square wave right here. So we're going to grab the envelope depth for the filter and then we're going to mess with the mod envelope number one because we can see that that is mapped to this modulation here. So let's make that a little bit more of a plucky kind of thing here. And we can hear LFO1 is also modulating the filter cutoff. Let's turn that down for a second. Let's put that on the shapes of the oscillators instead. And then let's edit that LFO, turn down the fade a little bit. So it's going to come in right with the start of the sound and then let's page over in the menu and let's make it so that it restarts on the notes. So you'll notice that the LFO resets with every note on. Now we can make that a little faster if we wanted. And let's add a little bit of a chorusy sort of modulation. The effects section is really well laid out where you've got your most important parameters right under your fingers. So we can kind of dial in a speed for the chorus to make it a little slower. And then we can do some deeper editing over in the effects section. So we're going to page over to the chorus and let's, uh, let's cut some of the mid range out. Just thin it out a little bit, and then I like adding some feedback. Now let's mess with the delay. We hear we get a nice sort of analog pitch shifting kind of effect here. And let's make the filter a little bit more smoother on the onset. 
and the amplitude as well. Get the reverb a little more under control. I like that delay setting. Okay, let's take this in. Arm up a track, we've got the peak selected here. We're gonna record a little something. Perfect. So now I'm going to clip out the most interesting 32 bars of that and then we can move on to a new sound. So you'll notice that I kind of experimented with some different sound design parameters there and then kind of gave a bit of a performance as the part was playing back. So we're going to play back our next little MIDI clip and uh, for this one let's just initialize the patch here. So we're going to get kind of a simple bright like a uh, saw wave here and let's play that in conjunction with what we just recorded here. So I'm going to get my level right here. I'm going to give the Ableton a little bit more juice. Okay, so let's shape this sound up. So first we'll put some filter on it. Let's animate the filter a little bit with the envelope again. A little more volume here. So we're gonna set up the LFO just like we did last time. Let's do a little bit of sort of PWM kind of. And let's make these swim and detune a little bit. So we're gonna take the LFO depth for the pitch modulation, kind of spread it around. And make sure all of these are in our pre-filter mix. So now we've got a nice swimming kind of detune sound. Add a little chorus to kind of heighten that effect. Not too much reverb. Yeah, I'll sync this up. We can also change some settings with the delay here. So we can give kind of a ping pong effect with the LR ratio, which I really like actually. Just kind of mess with it to taste. All right, great. That'll work. Let's go ahead and do another kind of similar performance here and track that in. So I'll start with the filter cutoff down a little bit. Now we've kind of put in two different sorts of sounds, one more of a pad, one more of a plucky kind of thing. Uh, this one is a little bit more of a lead, so let's put in a new part. Now, 
putting a sine wave through here lets us showcase one of my favorite things about the hands-on controls of the Peak, which is this Oscillator 3 filter modulation. Because here we have a nice sine wave and we'll key track with our filter. So this is gonna give kind of an FM sound, but it's FM on the filter cutoff of the other sounds that are passing through. So it just kind of adds a nice buzzy timbre. I'm gonna make this a little pluckier. Little verb. up the attack time for both the filter modulation and the amplitude. And then let's also add a bit of a pluck to the beginnings of these using modulation envelope 2, which is normaled over here. Really quick. Otherwise it gets out of control. So this is the one for all the marbles. All right, so if we were going in later, we would have a wealth of different options to experiment with as far as which parts use, but for now, let's just use a little, yeah, we'll use a little 32 bar blip from here. And continuing on in the parts, let's take a look at this one and see what we've got here. Let's initialize the sound to see what this is gonna call for. And let's run it. Ooh, this is the one that we like the delicate lead on. You'll hear this. Here's my gripe though, that stop at the end of the note is really awkward, so. Let's go ahead and soak this in some reverb like everything else. Yeah, I like this one. So that kind of helps, but let's actually add some release here. Eh, need some less pluck. Yeah, a little too much glide for my taste, we'll turn that down. Not so fond of the pluckiness of that. Just try to get it to sit right in the mix right away. Do more of a hand set time for this. slower. It's a little more natural without the sync delay. Chorus it up. Again, I like to put high pass on the chorus and add some feedback. Okay, excellent. So there is a nice long phrase as well. You'll notice that I'm taking these shorter MIDI loops and recording longer parts. Uh, this can get away from feeling as loopy and it can sort of wrap the sound design into the actual composition a little bit more. So cool, uh, everything but the bass line. So uh, I found that, where is it? This 
brood baseline was like a really good starting point for this part. So last little bit here to tie it all together. Let's have a whirl. I didn't need to do much to this one, honestly. Messing with the glide though. This one I'll put the glide on. Too much. Turn off everything but the chorus. I'll let this one chorus a bit. for me. Let's go ahead and run this in and have a listen. This one takes advantage of the various distortions. filter swoop in a little bit more. Right, let's try to get a little 16 bars for the marbles. I'll take the last one. Okay, cool. So now we've kind of worked our way back up through that arrangement and hopefully we've covered a good deal of the sonic territory that you can get out of this instrument. So let's actually go ahead and open up a different Ableton file after we give this one a quick run to see what we just did. All right, so we just spent some time looking at some of the more traditional polysynth sounds that the peak can make. Uh, so I thought it would be good to spend a little bit of time looking at some of the percussion, special effects, sort of uh, non-traditional polysynth sounds that you can get out of this thing. So I've prepared another little example arrangement. And so let's listen to the initial pass through. Again, these are gonna be all sounds from peak.
right, there is a little taste of some of the dynamic range that you can get out of these different sounds. Uh, let's take a closer look. Okay, so we are going to start with a snare sound, and I'm actually going to use the analog snare preset on here as a basis because I, I actually really like that. So one thing that you can do to make navigating the presets easier is to use this category setting. So to get there, I hit the patch button there, and then I hit this bottom of the three buttons here that highlighted the bottom row, and then I will use this encoder to navigate to the drum perk section, and then this encoder here will allow us to choose from the sounds in that category. Cool, so we've got the analog snare pulled up, and we are going to go ahead and play back the pattern into it, and then I'll kind of spice it up a little bit. Cool. So it's actually got a nice sort of snare-like sound. Um, a big part of that is the use of the three oscillators and the ring mod. So like, that's kind of what adds the center of the sound. So we can turn those down a little bit and then turn up the filter. So we made it just a bit noisier. Right, so already we can kind of really dial in the timbre of this sound. Um, and then the amplitude envelope will allow us to make it a bigger snare, put a tail on it with the release, or a little bit tighter, which is what I tend to prefer, right? Um, and then we can also try out some different things with the filter types, right? So if you want a thin, like, upper layer just to add a little bit of snap, you know, the bandpass works really well. You can bring that down to add a little bit more of the mid-range, you know. And then you can also make it so there's more of a filter sweep here. And then also change the contour of that filter sweep with the envelope. So there's one sort of zappy kind of snare sound. I'm pretty partial to the high-pass filter, maybe with a little bit less envelope motion. Uh, if I need to kind of tame the high frequencies in this, I might just use an EQ in the box. Um, but this is nice and bright and kind of more what I'm going for here. So now let's add a little bit of something here with the delay. Uh, I believe the way it comes sort of stock out of the box is with a tighter delay that, you know, gives you kind of that nice sort of tight sound. But here I'm going to actually go ahead and sync this up set it to quarter notes. Where is that? Perfect. And with the pattern that I played in with the little syncopated jump, that's going to give us a nice sort of kind of rolling feel. Okay, cool. So let's mess around with this and get ourselves apart. Start off with less delay. Leave that in there for fun, just in case we need that later. Okay, cool. So we've got a snare in place. Uh, uh, the next little bit to weave in here is going to be the kick drum. So in that same kind of category, we have this really nice analog kick here. Um, so let's give that a quick listen here. Get the levels right. So here, I'm going to throw some headphones on to make sure. 
This has a lot of low end. Basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at the three oscillators are all sine waves and they're all being mixed together here and then they're going into the filter and the mod envelope two is basically giving the kick like character because at a core most kick drum sounds are like a sine wave with a very tight attack release envelope and that's kind of what you know, forms the basis of a drum sound in general. So let's go ahead and listen to what we've got here and try to dial in something cool and we'll be able to hear the old snare drum as we go. So now I've got another bass that I'm going to add down the line. If you heard with some headphones, the first recording had an extremely deep kick. Like we're going to go for a different kind of sound. Like we're going to go for something that's more of just a tight beater here. So I'm going to work accordingly so one nice thing about this sound is that the filter sometimes you get a kick from self oscillating the filter because uh, that makes a really nice sine wave and we're gonna kind of do that on a later sound here but in this case the filter kind of can shape that initial impulse right you get a little bit less high frequency in So what I'm going for is just something punchy, tight, clean through the mid-range, not too clicky necessarily, and a little bit more of a bread and butter kind of like utility sort of sound. So let me give this a roll because that's about what I was going for. Here, a little bit more click comes through. You can also kind of soften up those attacks by just barely nudging up the attack here. Here, it gets higher pitched as we increase the decay on this mod envelope two that's because these sine waves aren't getting to nosedive as much basically so if we want to deepen that out we just make this faster all right great um we should be able to just use that initial sound that's pretty much what i was going for uh but i wanted to just show some of the range of just like a simple kick patch here okay awesome so now the hi-hats were another winner for me here so i am going to pull up that preset again it's in the drum section so it's just a couple little bits away and so these hi-hats actually utilize the arpeggiator so if you look quick at Ableton here you'll see that we actually have some sustained notes and I'm taking advantage of the fact that since we're actually synthesizing these we're going to be able to basically key track on the pitches and the filter and kind of get a little bit of a ghost melody hidden in our hi-hats so let's give this a whirl now by starting this clip as we listen back Back. So you can kind of hear that ascending melody in the hi hats. Now, with this, you'll notice that it's kind of uh, animated by these LFOs. There's a sample and hold going here, um, and so you can change the speed of that to change kind of like how the timbre shifts pseudo randomly over time. And then this square wave is also modulating the sound. So, so with this, it's almost more of like an every other on off kind of thing. Whereas this is more of like a bar for bar variation. So we'll twiddle with that as we perform kind of here. Cool. Now, there's actually not any noise in this hi-hat sound. Um, and it's all kind of like detuned oscillators and uh, you know this high pass filter as well as some uh, some ring modulation here that's really prominent and so we can kind of change the timbre over here and 
and it's actually just ask three and the and the ring mod here. So we can kind of control the pitch with ask three, and then we can add some noise here. And the filter makes a huge difference. We'll turn it up a little bit higher, and then we'll notice that these modulators are actually kind of animating the sound within the arpeggiator, um, and so we can kind of change this sort of pseudo random from the sample and hold here. And then this is kind of like a resynced square wave LFO that's adding sort of larger changes. And so that can be more kind of real fast with the groove here or more slower bar by bar, bar if we slow it down. So these will all just be great performance tools. And then additionally, we can take advantage of the gate time on the arpeggiator here to really tighten up the sound. Cool, so it's a really good place for me to start at least, and then we can have some fun. Excellent, so now we've got a really dynamic hi-hat part here. Um, and then finally, let's see, this one is going to be just a little bit of a harmonic element to flesh things out. So um, I'm going to actually show you how I was able to save a preset here. So we're going to go to all sounds for the category, and then we will go ahead and scroll through patches until we get to the C section, which is where I put my preset. And then we've got it craft one right here. Okay, so basically what I did here is I started from just an init and uh, kind of added a tighter filter envelope and uh, switch one of these sounds to actually the uh, electric piano over for uh, oscillator one. So now let's have a listen and we've got this little chordal part here. So let's check it out. So, we can just kind of play with the effects on this one. Now with the effects, we can edit even the reverb deeper. So like, let's say that I wanted more high end and ease up on the low pass. And I'm going to actually add a high pass filter here. So it's just the high end shimmer. A little more mid range in there and a little bit more dampening up here. Nice shimmer. Cool. That will be good to work with. Um, and so now uh, let's say that we wanted to save our changes to this patch. What we can do is we can go ahead and hit the save button and then you can choose a name for what you want to save the patch as. So we could rename this first patch and basically save over our previous work. Or, you know, if we felt that we had changed this enough where it was worth saving a new patch, then, you know, you can scroll either way with these buttons and then use this encoder to change it. So this is craft two. And then we are going to go to our next page here. We can choose a location. So we're going to choose a blank location. Hit it again and then choose a category for it. We'll call it a keyboard and then hit save one more time. And now we can recall this patch anytime we want. So for our final part here, kind of a, a bit of a baseline, I'm going to go ahead and get a new track going here, get it to our correct input pair and K mix, and then pull up this. Uh, we're going to actually pull up a bass sound that I made earlier here. So scrolling back, I believe that this is the one here. Let's take a look. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so this is actually taking advantage of all of the different drive stages of this as well as the filter self oscillating. So we've got a little part for this and uh, let's try to get something going here.
Now in the case of this one, mod envelope one is what's modulating the filter cutoff, and that's what's creating the dip of the 808. So we're gonna get a lot of timbral change out of the decay here. Cool, let's get that real quick. All right. All right, cool. So at this point, we've seen some of the many things that this synthesizer can do. It's worth noting that uh, for all the time we spent today, we didn't even scratch the surface of the capabilities of the unit. For example, each of the oscillator, envelope, LFO, ARP, the modulation matrix, the voicing, the FX, like there's a pretty extensive set of options that are a little bit under the hood, uh, still easy to get to and navigate to, and um, it can really make the effects or, you know, the modulation sources, the voicing, just everything more powerful. And for example, in the modulation matrix, you can actually find options to set up FM configurations between the oscillators, and those sound absolutely fantastic. So. If you're not quite ready to go in and set up your whole own modulation matrix, it can be good to find a preset that you like and just scroll to the modulation matrix and, and, and look at what's routed where. Um, additionally, we didn't use the animate section. Um, these are sort of some nice performance macros that can be used to literally animate your sound with the touch of a button. So, you know, if there's a couple things that you want to control with one button, boom, put them on the animate button. And then finally, if you're using this with any kind of CV, capable gear, there is a very convenient little 3.5 millimeter output uh, input on the back, and that is going to allow you to route an external CV input to any of the possible destinations in the modulation matrix. So, you know, if you want to sequence one of these parameters with a Eurorack sequencer or, uh, you know, use your Eurorack modulation sources as additional modulation sources along with these, then sky's the limit. And so that really opens up the capabilities of the synth. And then finally, as I briefly touched on before, the FPGA-based Oxford oscillators on this instrument do offer some really interesting shapes uh, that you just simply don't get from analog oscillators, but those behave under audio rates modulation just as well as you could ever expect from an analog oscillator. So, you know, I definitely encourage you to explore the different sounds in the more section, um, as that's really one of the special unique things about the synth. So go ahead and check out our different bundle listings at craftmusic.com. We can get you a great deal on the peak as well as the accessories you might need to get the most out of it. And if you have any questions, uh, give us a call or shoot us an email. Thanks for watching.